Hello, everyone. Uh, this is about arthroscopic assisted intraarticular distal radius fracture fixation, uh, a procedure with a goal to achieve a step off of less than one millimeter or a gap of less than one millimeter. And that, that would be the ideal way to treat these intraarticular fractures of the radius. And why would I do this procedure? Because assess and correct intraarticular step off or a gap after manipulation, reduction, and provisional fixation. That is the, that is the basic goal here. And uh, identifying associated ligamentous and chondral injuries and its management. So it's an opportunity for us to uh, see any associated uh, ligamentous injury in the corpus. The need for arthroscopy, uh, why is it so? Because close reduction and external fixator or KYS basically relies on fluoroscopic accuracy. And open reduction and plate fixation gauges articular reduction indirectly via metaphyseal corticular congruity. You don't really get to see the articular surface itself. And metaphyseal cortical reconstruction uses ligamentor taxis for joint surface reduction. And so we assume that when you look at you know, the SE arm, we assume that the, the articular surface is intact, uh, even though there might be a depression inside, which, which some for a gap sometimes, which is easily not seen on a SE arm image. There's no standard intraoperative modality which measures a step off or a gap reliably of one to two millimeters. And it has been proven that a step or a gap of more than two millimeters would lead to eventually to arthritis. And arthroscopy basically complements fluoroscopy because the articular combination, depressed or rotated fragments, gap, chondral and ligamentous damage, all these can be seen. You get an additional information through the arthroscopic uh, kind of procedure. Uh, it's got a learning curve, definitely. There might be a chance of compartment syndrome during a wrist arthroscopy because the articular surface now is in contact or you know there's a continuity with the forearm also. Technical difficulties due to inadequate visualization because of the bleeding and hematoma inside. And it's definitely cumbersome without much benefit. Uh, I'll come to that later. And operating time constraints and added costs, especially in your practice, you need to think about all these things. Now, the arthroscopic assisted procedure, basically the basic steps are the same as the routine procedure. You do a close reduction or a close manipulation to assess the fracture reduction and its stability. And this is, this is, a, it is a closed uh, intraarticular fracture here. And then you do a close reduction and a CM and see how the fragments are falling back there. And then what you do is basically to check whether uh, we can minimally fix them. So once that is done, we fix with K wire or a mini open reduction is done here uh, with a locking plate. Uh, so, so either you use a K wire here, provisionally fix this with using a raft, a raft wire or, and then you make a small opening here and then you uh, use a, a plate uh, open reduction and provisionally fix the fractures so that you get a reasonable alignment here. And then we go in for doing the arthroscopy. So this, this technique is called PART, which is plate resetting arthroscopic reduction technique uh, popularized by the Japanese group here. So this is just a provisional fixation with one screw here, and then maybe a couple of K-wires there, and then, then you go proceed to the arthroscopy itself. And the most common portals are the three, four, four, five, and a six R portals are used. Uh, the hematoma and debris will be there uh, initially with the especially acute injuries, so that needs to be removed. Then you assess the intercarpal ligament injuries and chondral injury deprivement is done. Then you assess the articular surface. If there are any depressed fragments, we elevate that and try to close the gaps in between them. We also evaluate the TFCC ligament, which is a lot of times injured in the displayed uh, articular uh, fractures, intraarticular fractures. One way of uh, you know, uh, reducing the uh, uh, edema and then chance of compartment syndrome or fluid extravasation would be to use this SMAX kind of bandage here so that the fluid from the wrist doesn't get into the forearm. So one way of doing it would be this. And also you can use a dry scope whenever possible uh, for you to minimize this. So this is again the same patient with the intraarticular distal radius fracture here. You can see that so when you enter the, the joint itself, it'll be all, you know, uh, there'll be a lot of hematoma, it'll be all hazy and everything. You Sometimes you need to give a good couple of washes there with the help of a syringe so that the, the, the whole articular surface starts looking clear and 
it looks like a battlefield almost in an acute fracture and so you have provisionally fixed it now and then you start seeing these fracture lines here and the what you need to see is to see where these fragments there is a gap or there is a step or sometimes there is a rotation of the fragment so you will start probing these fracture fragments here that is your 3 mm probe here so the tip is basically 3 mm and so you know that how much of the step of a gap you can is it 1 mm or 2 mm so you try to clear the hematoma between those fracture lines uh, slowly so that this is all seen in a magnification so it's 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 not so bad actually as it looks like but then because of the magnification of the scope itself you would see this and you try to see and lift off the fragments also check for the interosseous ligament the scaphalunate and the this is that the scaphalunate junction here what we are looking at and then we shave in uh, clear the debris with the with the with the shaver there and small chondral, you know, those very small uh, synovium and other things, once they're cleared, we can see the fracture lines much more clearly uh, once you do that. So it takes some time for this process to happen. And uh, then you start seeing these fracture fragments. So this is the styloid fragment which we saw. And even though there was a wire going through that, you see some amount of movement happening there. And that's what we were talking about, that step there, you know, it's kind of proud there and there's a small gap there and that that is required to be uh, kind of reduced back to the main fragment so these are the steps which you do and then sometimes you withdraw the wire and try to get in the best of the fit there so the unstable radial styloid fragment here and so you can reduce it back again uh, so you have your assistant there who can you know help you with uh, holding a clamp a reduction clamp from outside and then you try to pass in a K wire from there. So this is just a first attempt of uh, uh, trying to get the reduction back there and trying to put in the wire so that it fits nicely into this gap here without the initial what uh, the gap and step what we saw. So the assistant is very important here. How you know how to use this reduction clamp here? and then try to get this, push it in back into this position as much as possible. Your CR might not show this, your CR might show that it's in a reasonable alignment, but that amount of a step and a gap can definitely, so it needs to fit in, the, the jigsaw puzzle has to fit in nicely there, and that is what we're trying to do with the scoping. So that extra kind of, uh, you know, fine tuning of these fragments, uh, these are all very, very important here. And you're trying to stabilize that with your uh, probe inside. And you're trying to fine tune the reduction and see whether it sits in nicely or it's, it's, it's still loose there. There could be a lot of loose intra-articular fragments also here. So that's very, very important. And once that's done, uh, you can go on to the other areas. Uh, this patient, or oh, you saw that there was a ovular uh, kind of a fracture there. So you need to go check. So from outside, you can pass the K wire, and now it is sitting very nicely there. Uh, absolutely no gap or you know no step there. So the probe is not going there, which means to say that it's the gap is less than two millimeters there. The tip of the probe is just about a millimeter, so it's it's nicely sitting in there. And then you start seeing for other injuries also along with this. So you see for the toller fragment here on this aspect, so it is sitting very nicely. Uh, so this is the amount of fine tuning you can do with these intraarticular fractures, and that's that sometimes becomes very very important for you to get a good reduction. Then you have the ulna fragment here, which was uh, what we saw. This is now pushed by the plate here. If you see, there's the ulna rim there. We have provisionally put a plate there, but absolutely no uh, gap there or no step here. That's what you need to confirm at this point. And then you start looking for the ligaments also. This is the on the lunate fossa here. This is the lunate here. That was the radius. And this is the lunate facet. Looks everything looks fine here. And then you check for the, uh, the lunate itself, the lunate triquetral ligaments. If there is some flap tear, small tears, you can leave them alone. Or since you are there, you can shave it off. Like this, this is the LT ligament, the small tear there, a flap tear there. You can trim it off, you can use a basket forceps or you can use a shaver there and you can trim it off. That's uh, one part of it. And the most other important part would be to check for the TFCC ligament itself. So uh, that is a deprivement with the shaver of that uh, flap there. And 
So you take go compartment by compartment. You finish the radial compartment. You are in the mid compartment there, and then finally you go towards the alna compartment. So that is the alna corner here now. Uh, you know, just if you shave it off, then you will see the TFCC very clearly there. And then you need to check whether there's any tear or something. Whether you know there was an associated alna styloid base fracture and the TFCC is very lax. That's an opportunity for us to immediately repair this. So not always routinely done. So that's a change. Uh, TFCC, there's alna lunate ligament here. The TFCC looks a little, you know, looks a little lax here. That is the classical trampoline sign here. So there is some amount of laxity. So you can reduce it and then you know get any KY. But if there's no tear, then you can always you can always uh, uh, pin it and hold it there. So these are the things which can be done uh, very particularly. Not routinely done, but it's, this is an option. There's a skill, an additional skill set, which uh, surgeons, if they have it, they can use it nicely. And this is the final picture of this, uh, this patient. What you can't do is you can't assess the ulnar extrinsic ligaments, the radio scaphoid capitate ligaments, the radio lunate ligaments, and dorsal lip fractures. It's very difficult for you to go through real dorsal or real ulnar. You can't realign distal fragments with the long axis of the radius by the arthroscopic uh, route. But sometimes there could be old injuries, so you need to be sure of these things. The current uh, scenario is uh, indications of an active, healthy person with displaced fracture will benefit from surgical treatment. But there's no consensus in preferred method of reduction and fixation, and each method has its advantages and complications. And the current evidence for arthroscopic assistance is most level one studies indicate better radiographic alignment, better wrist motion, but not, that, that doesn't mean better wrist course itself. Ligament injuries, there's no hard evidence on improved outcome, uh, which after the repairs, like primary TFCC repairs, is there a lot of uh, you know uh, improved outcomes? No, no evidence as such. And the last AAOS clinical guidelines, they said that as yet has it as a weak evidence to support its use. But as I told, it's an additional skin you need to master. And we always look at the wrist as a single joint here, along with the carpal bones, along with the distal radial lung joint, not just the distal articular surface of the radius. So there could be associated injuries here, and they could also determine the outcomes. So if somebody has a scaphalonic instability or a bad TFCC tear or something, these patients always come back with pain later. So this is an opportunity for us to look into this and take appropriate actions whenever necessary. So that is the only great advantage of this. Thank you very much for your attention.